Hello everybody. These are the video notes for Friday the 13th. Kind of spooky. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, so this is slide number 27. We're just going to do a couple slides today and then there'll be a couple videos that you need to make sure you watch because they're going to be able to explain and show things obviously a little bit better than I can do just um, talking and waving my hands around like I usually do. All right, so we ended up um, with half-life, right? We were talking about how half, uh, if you have a sample size, the time it takes for half of that sample to decay into a more stable version um, of the original parent isotope, all right? So we're gonna look at some uses of this, um, this idea that the, the sample will start to decay. So the first one, and it's something that we talked about last year some during that adaptations unit, um, was carbon dating. It's using the radioactive isotope of carbon-14, and it's used to find the age of once living things. Animals eat plants. Plants are full of carbon-14. This carbon-14 will start to decay into nitrogen-14. Notice, carbon-14 and nitrogen-14 are not the same thing. There is a different number of protons. You go from six protons um, for, yes, for carbon um, to um, having, or excuse me, yeah, four protons to having five protons to form nitrogen. So the number of protons has changed. As that changes, you change the element, right? Because if you change protons, you no longer have the same element that you were dealing with. So the half-life of carbon, and some of our calculations we looked at this, was 5,730 years. The amount of carbon is gonna stay constant in the organism while the organism is alive because it's continually renewing that, that carbon-14 source as it eats those plants. Obviously, once the animal dies, it is no longer replenishing that carbon-14 source. So at that point, that's kind of when the decay process starts because no more carbon-14 is being introduced to that organism. There is a brain pop, so I would like you to watch that. It is linked in Google Classroom, so take a look at that after you watch these notes. And then there's also something called uranium dating. Basically, they're kind of the same concept, um, except it's used to date um, rocks, usually. So this is a form of absolute dating um, that we talked about last year, not just uh, relative dating like a comparison, but this is a pretty firm, firm number given to um, a group of rocks age. So sometimes rocks will contain this uranium, and there are two radioactive isotopes that are within those rocks that have really, really long half life So this is really beneficial if you're talking about something kind of um, very, very old. Um, so that is something that wouldn't be useful if you have something that's relatively young. And the half-lives wouldn't have gone through enough cycles to be useful. So the amount of uranium and their daughter nuclei that are measured um, will tell us the age of the rock. Um, and then finally, radiation um, is given off during this radioactive decay process, and we talked about those alpha, beta, and gamma rays, uh, or particles. And radiation has a lot of really helpful medical uses. Um, cancer cells obviously occur when um, there's a group of cells that kind of go rogue. They go off and do their own thing, and typically one of their characteristics is they start to multiply it. Um, a lot quicker than they should. And that's why sometimes tumors and things and masses can form. Radiation can help to control that. So the radiation given off during nuclear decay can break up that, um, that information and kind of disrupt how the cells are multiplying. The problem with radiation is that it's gonna do that to the cancer cells and the healthy cells around it, which is why there can be a lot of side effects with radiation. Um, unfortunately, I'm sure that we are all probably familiar with somebody in our life, or maybe we even have a friend of a friend that has experienced cancer or is experiencing it and maybe going through radiation. Um, that's why there, there are a lot of side effects because the radiation is going to affect cells that have a quick um, life cycle. And so a lot of times those are the hair cells. Um, and so that's why a lot of times hair cell or, you know, hair will, um, 
you know, fall out like during chemo, because chemo kind of works the same way. Um, but the radiation is going to be very specific in what it targets, and so um, I'll let the brain clock kind of talk a little bit more about that. That's as far as I want to get today. We will start in with nuclear fusion, no, fission, um, on our notes for Monday. So if you have any questions, be sure to email me. This was short and sweet to start um, these notes. We basically have two topics left. We have fission and we have fusion. Both of those are forms of um, nuclear activity that's going on. And so they're, neither one of them are super complicated. In theory, like the ideas are pretty basic. So we'll cover those next week and then get things wrapped up. Um, again, if you have questions, please let me know. Take care.